first, Indigenous activists had vowed they will squat in Melbourne's CBD until the King's Domain parkland is given to them. Now, the parkland includes the Shrine of Remembrance and the Maya Music Bowl. It also features a memorial to 38 Aboriginal people whose remains were reburied there in 1985. <coughs> The activists are led by Robbie Thorpe. Now, he's the uncle of independent Senator Lydia Thorpe. And they're demanding, amongst other things, a stone hut be created in the parklands for Indigenous purposes and that the area is renamed, omitting all references to the king and what they call the Windsor Crime family. Now, Lydia Thorpe was there today and she spoke to Melbourne Radio. She said, this is about sovereignty. The whole notion of sovereignty in this country has never been resolved. It's a peaceful sit-in on country where we practice our sovereign rights on our own country. Here's another clip of Lydia Thorpe talking about sovereignty and how she sees the situation. This Now, I've got to admit, Caleb and Liz, I'm a little bit sympathetic to these activists because have they not been encouraged or even created by governments, woke corporations and even woke religious groups? Remember NAIDOC Week and we have taxpayer funding for NAIDOC Week every year where they repeat over and over ad nauseum the slogan, always was, always will be. Aboriginal land. I remember going to church and they had always was, always will be Aboriginal land on the screens. I don't know why you go to Mate, church to learn that church. what the, load, the social there, justice what issue is. They worshipping? But I'm thinking if we really believe this, shouldn't we all exit the building and hand over the land? Or here's Anthony Albanese, our now Prime Minister, speaking two years ago in Parliament. Thanks very much, uh, Mr Speaker. And I begin by acknowledging that we meet on the land of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people. Land that was is and always will be Aboriginal land. So aren't these activists really just taking woke corporations, the woke Prime Minister at his word? Or what about this? They want the King's domain given to them. Mm -hmm. I didn't know too much about the King's domain, so I went on the Victorian Government website today to find out what is the King's domain in Melbourne parklands. And at the bottom of the page on the Victorian Government website, they have an acknowledgement of country where they talk about the, quote, unbroken spiritual, cultural and political connection of Indigenous people to the King's domain that has existed for, and they actually say, 2,000 generations. I'm not quite sure how they worked wow. that out. That's but some here's my more. point. These activists, I'm no longer really that angry or annoyed at them because they're not the biggest problem here. The biggest problem has been created by our political and cultural elites who keep saying things that they don't mean. Well, that's true. Well, I don't know that they created it. They've certainly enabled it and, and they allow it to continue it, to go on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, but, it. But, but it, it is fundamentally driven by a, a small group of nutcases in the Aboriginal community who believe that sovereignty was never ceded and they still have claim to the land, right? I but mean, aren't this... they taking the Prime Minister at his word? Uh, yes, but when, when they say always was, always will be, we get the implication. But we all know it's not the truth, right? Even those who say it know it's not the truth. And it's a slogan to shout at a rally or whatever it might be. But if he wants to, to stay there in his tent forever and a day, which is uh, what Mr Thorpe has threatened to do, that's exactly where he's going to be because they're never going to give King's Domain back to Aboriginal people. It's one of the most significant parks in Melbourne. And now Melbourne viewers will understand what I say uh, when I say this. They will never take the tan from us. The tan is the walking trail that goes mm -hmm. around King's uh, Domain. It's very popular. But he's got Government House in it, for heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. I know we've been talking recently about whether, we're, whether or not we're going to get an Indigenous Governor-General. Perhaps if they ever hand King's Domain over, we'll get an Indigenous Governor of Victoria. But, I mean, come on, mate, seriously, what are you playing at? Well, how can the Victorian governments, Liz, say that uh, Indigenous people have an unbroken cultural, political connection to the land and not acquiesce to the claims? It 100% makes sense that then people think that they can just squat anywhere and say, mm. we're not leaving until you hand it back. You said it was ours. You guys said it was ours. So put your money where your mouth is. In this case, your land where your mouth is. And, of course, this sets 
such a precedent because we could just end up with tent embassies like the one camping outside of Old Parliament House, mm -hmm. some nut jobs set light to Old Parliament House mm, back in 2021. Right. Um, of course, the tent embassy condemned that and said, that was not us, we do not endorse this kind of action. But again, it's sending a signal. And how long before... That's somebody knocking on your door saying, well, I'm not leaving here until you give it back. <laughs> that may sound ridiculous at the moment, but the, the principle is the same. And if that is the message that people are getting, mm. oh, camp out in Hyde Park here yeah. in Sydney then. Just claim any real estate you like. Now, this particular mm. group is demanding that a house be built mm -hmm. in the park for uh, Indigenous healing and remembrance. Yep. They want to rename the park so that there's certainly no reference no to the monarchy. Um, they want its original name back, which I would butcher if I tried to pronunciate. They've called their squat sovereign camp. Sovereign camp. And it's this, this ridiculous issue of sovereignty that because we were here first, everything we see is ours. Let's take a moment again to revisit this map of native title, which you can find on the Australian government's website. The bright green areas are those in which native title has already been established. The shaded green areas are those where a title a submission has been received and it's ticked all the boxes. So one might as well say, look, it's just a matter of time before those shaded areas are now bright green. Also, the only parts on this map of our nation that you are looking at in which native title does not exist and cannot exist are the tiny red bits, if you can find them. This is getting out of hand already. These guys need to be told up to pack up and move on. Otherwise, what kind of movement is this going to start in our nation? And I believe I speak for the vast majority of Australians when I say we will not be besieged in our own country. You will not hold us to ransom. This is not going to work. And the irony that most of the people taking part in these movements uh, clearly have no day job, are probably on the taxpayer dime, being supported by us who are sweating our guts out nine to fives. The, the Indigenous people in this nation have every opportunity afforded to them already. They are very generously taken care of in excess of well over 30 billion. Some say it's closer to 40 billion every single year the taxpayer spends on less than 3% of the population. Population, this kind of behaviour is certainly not furthering anybody's cause and it's only driving division because then hard-working taxpayers just go, what the heck are we supposed to do? Nothing is enough. I just don't think you can say that it's a fringe group of activists because if your kids go to school, they're taught a history of Australia now that it always was, always will be, Aboriginal land. The legitimacy of Australia as a nation is continually undermined. And so as we move forward, that conception of our country is only growing. So it's not simply a fringe group of crazy I think it, activists I think it is currently. Mm. I think it is currently. It's growing. It, it will grow. And that's what they're, that's what they're betting on. That's so, why they're feeding this into the educational system at the rate that they are. So when you're doing that, it cannot end up anywhere good. It's all, only going to end up in conflict. And this is my point. This is being fostered, created. <clears throat> this is being encouraged by our political elite, whether it's our politicians, whether it's our corporations, even churches are fostering something. Mm. And whether they have no idea where it's going, they just like to say things they don't mean because it sounds polite, or whether it's a deliberate attempt to divide the nation, I don't know. But it needs to stop. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a very ugly place. But that's the perniciousness of it, is that a lot of people do say it to sound polite. It's like the, the acknowledgement of country. I mean, people do it because they think they have to do it, not because they necessarily think it has any value. It almost people. becomes a, a tokenistic thing. I mean, if you truly believe that it always was, always will be, uh, just hand your house back to, to a local Aboriginal person. I mean, the, the Prime Minister, Mr Albanese, owns five homes, doesn't he? Uh, give all of them back and, uh, and give away all of that rental in income you've been making. 